Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today we are going to talk about how you clean your fleece. So after you've picked out all the vegetable matter, it's time to wash it. Uh, I was um, very lost at how to do this. Luckily, I hang out at the yarn shop with a bunch of ladies that know way more than me. So I was talking to them and I learned from them. One of the key things is this book. Because I knew nothing, I wanted to have a source of information that had everything. It's called The Art of Washing Wool, Mohair, and Alpaca. I like it because here it says, scour wool like a boss. I was like, okay, I need to be a boss because I don't know anything. This book is by Mary Egbert. I would highly recommend if you're going to be doing it and want to know all the information, go ahead and get this book. You can do it without, but this is just helpful. So today I'm going to give you a few of the very key tips that I learned from the book and from my friends. What we have here is a Cormo fleece from SAF. My friends went, brought home a pound of this for me. Beautiful, beautiful. My friend Sheila had processed it and washed it once. And I thought that was going to be good enough. So I went ahead and made it into a bat and started to spin it on the spinning wheel, but it was not. There is still a lot of lanolin in it and it made it very sticky for spinning. So I thought I need to wash this again. So it's a great time to teach you how to do this. So after you've picked out your vegetable matter, then you want to wash it. And I have this very handy container. I do have a utility sink. This fits in the sink and I don't need to fill it with as much water because this helps save on that. Inside the fiber goes. In the sink, I fill this with the soap and water. Then I add this. Now, here are the very key things to cleaning your fiber and not felting it. First of all, you want the temperature of the water hot. I need to wear gloves because I have it so hot. Between 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Our house hot water temperature is set on 120. So I just let it run hot, hot. You need it hot so that it will melt the lanolin. When you leave it in the water, you do not want to leave it more than 20 minutes and let that cool off because once it cools, it, the lanolin will set back into your fiber. Now, I found this, I asked around and it was also in the book. Unicorn Power Scour works fabulously. Key is you have to have enough water to suspend the lanolin that you want to remove from the wool. It has to have somewhere to go. So that's why you need the water. Now in this book, I did learn that a four to one ratio or three to one ratio is good. So that is the ratio of water to dry wool. You also need the correct amount of soap because that is what carries the lanolin away. So if you do all of these things, it really helps out with getting the fiber clean, not having to do multiple scour baths. So who wants to do a lot when you can do less and get it clean? So just remember, hot water, plenty of water, no more than 20 minutes, good soap, the right amount of soap. The key to not felting the fiber is do not let the water get cold. So watch that 20 minute mark. Do not rinse the water with cold water. You want to rinse it with the same temperature or as close to as possible as what it was sitting in in its scour bath. Uh, going from hot to cold will make the fibers grab onto each other. The other thing is do not agitate it with your hands too much. I get all the fiber in the container, kind of push it down to make sure that it's all covered with water and then I let it be. After the 20 minutes when I'm rinsing with that hot water, I just kind of move it around a little bit just to get the water through it, but not too much agitation. 
And then to get the water out of it, I do have to squish it some. And that hasn't really harmed it. I've not had any problem with felting from that. So I squish the water out. Then I lay it on a towel and just gently put another towel on top of it and just kind of pat it to get water out. And then I lay it on the drying rack. A couple of very critical tips. If you have a septic tank, do not put your lanolin water, do not let it go down the drain into your septic. You need to, like I have this here, you need to then take it outside and dump it. And I heard that that water is good for your garden. The other tip is be very careful about the soap that you use. If you do not use Power Scour, you really need to research what soap you are using. This will tell you all about soaps and different kinds of soaps and what fibers to use which on. But the key thing is you do not want to soap with a pH over nine. So that means absolutely no shampoo, no laundry soap, and no borax. Other than that, it just depends on the wool of what you can use. All right, so I will show you the washing of this beautiful, beautiful fiber that still has a fair amount of lanolin in it. One tablespoon of power scour to two gallons of water. I usually estimate. If you want to be perfect, you can measure. It's always good to have gloves just for fiber and dyeing the fiber. Got a lot of water in here. I'm going to see if it's enough. I want more water in there because more water, more water gives more place for the lanolin to go. Okay, that's good. We're going to let that sit for 20 minutes and then we'll check it. The 20 minute timer went off, so let's see how this is. Yeah, so the fiber was pretty clean. Usually this water will look very brownish as well, but it's kind of milky color, so I bet you that's the lanolin that was coming off of this fiber. So hopefully it feels a lot less sticky after this bath. all draining out. Give it a little bit of a push to get that extra water out. Here you can see the water. All milky, so that's great. The that place will be cleaner for sure. I'm going to just lay it out on the towel and I'm pat it. I'm going to let it sit on this drying rack for a couple days until it gets dry. Thanks for watching and happy fiber washing.